Two gays watch Drag Race. Hello, I am one of the two gays and one of your gay hosts, Zachary Landolt. And I'm your second gay host, Aaron Holman. Today we are recapping episode three of season 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, called Phenomenon. Phenomenon. What an episode. Yeah, She's a glamour on. I loved this episode. It was so yeah. much fun. So high energy and just great. Mm-hmm. And we have an extra special fun guest. We have comedian Tim Murray, uh, expert on Alpha Buzz and host of the podcast Slumber Party, where, and he also uh, writes RuPaul's Drag Race recaps for Screen Rant. I think that's what it is. Don't quote me. That sounds right to me. I, I think it's right. But listen, Tim was an incredible guest. I can't wait for you all to hear this interview with him. He's got a lot of opinions and we dive into it. Yeah, we get into it. It was a lot of fun. Um, (laughs) I want to make it clear because we talked about this person a lot on the episode. I have nothing but love for Kamora Hall. I just want to say this. I feel like it was a week where Kamara Hall was spoken of in a certain way a lot. And like we said, we like to keep the show positive. So we do not think that she is a bad queen, untalented queen. She is fabulous. Everyone just has off weeks and then watch her watch her be fab next week. You know what I mean? Um, so I just want to Absolutely. Just wanna put that disclaimer out there. And now that that disclaimer is out there, why don't we tune in to the rest of the episode? Let's go. Hear what Tim has to say. Mm. Well, Tim, thank you so much for joining us to talk about Season 13, Episode 3, Phenomenon. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. You know, I I always hate talking about Drag Race. It's my least favorite thing to discuss. (laughs) Oh, I know. I have no strong opinions. I yeah, we'll we'll have to we'll have to like wade through it and figure it out because it's not it's not something I normally. (laughs) What were your what having me? It's so fun. Yeah, so what did you think of the episode overall to get to your initial thoughts? Okay, I loved this episode. I did and too. I, did you do too? Did I did too. I really did. I did. It was, it was a lot of fun. I love a good musical episode, and I thought that they killed their number. And we got more Tamisha Amon, which was like, I was happy to have it. It's, I can't get this out of my head. Tamisha, 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 Tamisha. <laughs> that Nicole Page Brooks did that on my podcast when she was before the season aired. She was like talking about Tamisha and La La Rie because they're Atlanta queens, and she yeah. kept doing that. And I have it in my <laughs> head. So it's so often. Yep. She's a queen. She's she's the one for me. Oh, that was a great interview. I saw that. I was like. This is great. Oh my god, thank you. Nicole, you. Nicole is Nicole is wild. Nicole Page Brooks needs to be back on an Yeah, bring her back. Bring 100. her back. 100. Please. Come on, she listen World so, of Wonder. Listen World of Wonder, she's so naturally funny. <laughs> well, I feel this like these just... queens, you can always tell when they're trying to like rev their engines back up to try to like get back on the show cuz they like zhuzh up their photos again. They just try to like do more appearances. I'm like, I see you, I see you. And so I would mm-hmm. be down for it. I hope it happens. While we're on the subject, um, I'm going to petition also Kelly Mantle. (laughs) Poor Kelly Mantle. Come on. (laughs) I rewatched the Browns, Tammy Brown series, because they just put it all on Amazon. And that is a masterpiece. Oh, it's insane. I've never seen that, and I want to watch it so fucking bad. Oh, get get stoned and watch it. It's a wonderful Um, rabbit hole. Uh, It's it's very short. You can do it. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I watched six minutes. (laughs) You're what? Wait, what? They're like six minutes long. They're very short. They're only six. Okay, I need to watch this. Because I watched her, Tammy's full, like, (laughs) half-hour Christmas comedy special with Kelly Mantle. And Kelly Mantle was killing the game. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's so funny. funny. She's so funny. You know who else is really secretly funny? (laughs) I saw this person host Drag Race Season 8 finale in New York City. And I was like, oh, I wonder how this is going to be. And then it was such a sleigh vivacious oh i've heard that i've heard that i've heard that mm-hmm. she was hysterical yeah. and like doing every kind of number that you want to see a drag <laughs> queen do 
she was so quick on the mic she was like really friendly but also reading people i was like <laughs> wow you really did not get a great uh edit on or no. time on that short short time on that show we spent more but time with was... ordination than we did with vivacious truly <laughs> true and well so the episode opens and we have the queens from last week walking into the workroom, congratulating each other on their performance. Simone is grateful for the praise from RuPaul and Candy acknowledges that it was not her finest performance. Also, Elliot comments on how the other group doesn't even know she's still here. <laughs> the next day, we see the pork chop queens entering the workroom, excited for a second chance to show their talent and fire. RuPaul announces that their mini challenge will be a runway show of two looks, the theme Lady and the Vamp. Now, how do you feel about this second group of gals? I am gagged. Aaron, sorry, you go ahead. I, I no, 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 no. I just, uh, I would love to hear what you got to say. Please go. I, I will be really honest. I loved the first episode of this season. And then I thought mm. season two was like a real snooze fest. I, or episode two, I mean, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. It was like a real snooze fest. I was just like, I don't know. Like what, where are the stakes? Where's the drama? <laughs> Where's the excitement? When they gave all of them nice critiques, I was like, honey, I have a lot to say about a lot of what you did up there. And I, I have some not so nice things to know. say. <laughs> I have some notes, yeah. <laughs> and so I was like really kind of underwhelmed by that episode. And then this episode, I thought it was just, there was so much more personality. Like this happening. is Drag Race. No, this is Drag Race. This, this is, is Drag like Race. It, was, it wasn't overly produced. Like those fights were real. All those girls really wanted to be the choreographer of that number for some reason. That was hilarious and... to watch. <laughs> oh my god. I have so much anxiety of when like I've worked on shows where they're like, oh, and you guys just figure out the choreography and it always turned into something like that where there's two two bitches with an opinion and you're just in the middle like, oh my god, I can't it's, even. It's too many choreographers, ladies and gentlemen. Too many. <laughs> yeah. Too many. And Tamisha just standing in the background being like, all these hoes are dumb was so good. Watching you know what it, I loved about the that? Slowly build up on her face. It was lovely. She she saved like the shadiness for her confessionals, her her uh, talking head moments. And to me, she is our narrator so far. The one that I'm enjoying the cutaway is sure. the most too. Yeah. You know who I've not been enjoying as a cutaway? Like it's it's I don't know if they were just they were just in a mood during the filming of this episode, but every time Rose has a talking head, it's just been like, yeah, we're doing this mm. thing and I'm really excited. It's just like, like no humor, no um, <laughs> excitement. It's just like flat, just like totally flat. Um, <laughs> maybe she was Jose on the show seems to me to be suffering from hot out of drag, hot in <laughs> drag syndrome, where she's just like, it's like, and really talented. She's obviously like a really, really good performer. Sure. Yeah. So she's, her personality is kind of like, yeah. I'm am amazing. Mm -hmm. and it's Can you just like... get me on stage or like what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like okay, <laughs> show me my place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if she's just very dry and it's not coming across, but right now it's like Tina Burner is like absolutely ready for that villain edit. She's sitting back, Ooh, she's yeah. waiting for it to come, and Rose's like, well, actually, what if I just kind of snuck in here and. <laughs> was kind of mean <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like and i even like blatantly mean like i would keep thinking all the stuff she would say i'm like she's not saying anything like that bitchy but she just has like resting bitch it's face every time they cut to her yeah it's just like but i love it i love for it it's just really fascinating to see who's gonna land in like the villain slot who's gonna be the miss congeniality like it's i love this early stage of the season where you're just watching all the pieces fall into place still it's i, I find that really fascinating she's a real wild card too i think for me because everyone in new york she was doing drag like when i was leaving new york city oh, wow. so i never saw her in the clubs or anything but i used to go see like jan and britta and mm -hmm. those girls and everybody says that rose is like really really good I like yes. she well, sure. turns the party at a show yeah so i'm interested to see what she turns out 
<laughs> I mean, she was, I, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll get to it later, but she, I did think she, she redeemed herself, I think, this week from, I was like, redeemed herself. She didn't even do bad the first week. It was just the other performer and her duo just had a more, I don't even know, appropriate take for the lip sync or just the, the appropriate, according to the producers that week. I don't even know. I think they wanted to get her salty. I was, th- I was saying, I was like, did they actually think that she was weaker or do they just want to make her pissed off because she's friends with Jan and like push that whole narrative that she's going to repeat like Jan's showing on the show? I don't know. I have a million theories. <laughs> it's setting it up in my mind for her to be, for that competitive side of her to be okay because it's like she's going to have struggled quote unquote in the beginning and then she's gonna be like and now i'm gonna prove it for the rest i kind of getting the same sense from what they're setting up for candy muse as well Mm. because i'm like i don't know i didn't expect candy to do as bad in her previous performance either yeah i yeah i wasn't i mean we're talking about this week's episode but i was shocked at the level of looks from candy last week like it was i was just like what is happening because i thought she looked so great the first week and i don't know what was going on with that runway but um i think a week's break is gonna be a good i think we got just a, i think those the, the first group i'm hitting the mic the first group we just got so much content from them because they were you know all in the first episode and the entire focus of the second episode so i think it's going to be nice to get get some space away from all of them really because i feel like the reason i also love this episode so much was because we were just seeing new faces again like Mm -hmm. seeing some different queens because usually when you know we're into the season when it's like seven people left you've gone through a whole journey um, and we have not gone any journey yet. Uh, some of them have not gone beyond a couple of rooms in the warehouse. So there you go. Hey. Well, before we go to the runway, we of course had this whole Kamara Hall moment where she's freaking <laughs> out with her makeup. And this was high drama. They were definitely pushing as high drama. We have the, the <laughs> producer saying five minutes, and it cut to her face. And I remember I gasped, I gasped, I went, oh, she's like actually not ready. <laughs> like not ready, not ready. <laughs> um, and when they were, oh my God. I, and I also was like, is this really happening? Or is this an audio edit? I don't know. But when they were announcing the show, when the judges were sitting on their little their little bench waiting for the show to start, I'm like, did this really happen? So what, what, what are your thoughts on this whole moment with Kimora? I think it's all very real. But <laughs> I also think that it's like, Rue and the girls, the girls being Ross and Michelle, are not, um, they're not going to suffer any fools and they're not going to wait long at all. So I think the producers were like, okay, we told Rue a certain time, this is the time we're going. (laughs) And Kamora was like, I'm not ready. And they were like, okay, you don't understand how it works around here. (laughs) Like, we will literally just not include you in this mini challenge. Do you think that she thought she was... Do you think she just thought she was going to be able to, like, squeeze out some more time? Like, I'll be ready in 10 minutes. Like, I don't know, maybe she had heard bad rumors about how flexible time I, was. I No, I think people like that truly don't have a good grasp of time. I don't think it was calculated in any way. I think she was like, <laughs> yeah. all right, I know I take a long time. I'm going to do the best I can. And then, like, when it's, like, five minutes left, she's like, holy shit my life is over (laughs) like Mm -hmm. people people who are late all the time they just really don't think about it like they don't they they just don't well she says later she usually has all the time in the world to get ready for drag and i can't remember which queen it was there was some queen that was on some other show talking about drag race there are so many saying the thing that people don't realize is that you know the fans try to drag these queens for their makeup skills but when you're not on drag race you can schedule as much time for yourself as you want to but suddenly you're on drag race and they're like you have one hour and you go oh, what an hour <laughs> what, what do you mean an hour and so i think for someone like kamora who already is as we saw from denali's comments uh notorious for taking a long time um mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was a bad moment. It was a rough moment. I think it has a lot to do with the story that they came forward with about like 
their unsupportive partner in life that they've had for quite a long time that and the fact that all their drag is in a storage unit if this is a queen who only performs two times a month i kind of don't blame her for taking extra time but like you were saying tim i don't think she understands how the timeline works around here in the workroom you know um we don't make rue wait absolutely that doesn't work i also I have to say, I cannot believe that we are on season 13 and this is the first time we are getting the storyline of, oh my God, a drag queen is late. Like, <laughs> right. like that's a brand new concept. Like, it was definitely the most gaggy. famous I mean, thing the about promo, drag I was queen. like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, it was really, I truly gasped. And it's so, yeah, you're right. It's so funny, Aaron, that they chose now rather than, I'm sure, the 6,000 times Alyssa Edwards was like, Lord Valentina. Valentina. I'm thinking about yeah, yeah, someone, you know, Valentina. like. Well, I heard that she literally said once, like, well, what do you want me to do? Go on the runway with my makeup not ready? Like, like yeah. so I'm just surprised they never, ever made that Used a this storyline yet. Yeah, I love just, it, though, that it came now because it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> and it was something it was for funny. Kimora to do, you know, and she needed things to do on this episode. True. <laughs> you know, I thought she slayed on the runway, though. Uh, this, the, the the mini challenge runway. Okay, okay. Let's, let's, let's okay. Keep it. Yeah, keep yeah it they up. were loving her mini challenge runway, too, and I was not. I was mm. I was not impressed. I was like, what? I was like, this Kate Middleton, look, I do not like watching girls come on this show wearing designer outfits it's so mm. boring to me like yeah. when tamisha iman is like yeah i made this i'm like that is fucking cool mm -hmm. i can tell that you have money or your partner has money or somebody in your world has enough money for you to rent that kate middleton look that is bland to me I, it's a no for me it's or it's like you're friends with i heard she's like friends with bob mackie and i'm like that's lovely but like uh, I mean, I love seeing some Bob Mackie looks, do not get me wrong, but it does get a little, yeah, boring after a while because you're like, oh, let me guess, that's an original Mackie. It's just like, there's, um, you know, oh, she did have it it's... altered to make it smaller. But, you but know, there's no- But her second episode on the show, I shouldn't be already prepared for what I think she's going to wear yeah. and then see it. T, yeah. <laughs> absolute yes. T. Yes. You know, so, <laughs> like, since we've already arrived at this point, already gone into it a little bit, um, let's just discuss the looks as they came in. Uh, starting with the first of our lady runways, the first person to walk in was Miss Denali. Oh, oh, oh. One second. And I do believe we will have some video. Oh, you will. There, here for all of you. Oh, we're going to Right now. Oh my god! It's happening! Oh my oh gosh! Oh my god! Is it, oh, please? There's Rose's okay. eyebrows. All right. Okay, I'm obsessed with Denali, but I hate this. I did not <laughs> love this either. Oh, this stuff like in her it. leg looks like a fucking like jellyfish like clung to her leg. Like I was like, I don't, I, I get the concept, but I, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't obsessed. She's a gag worthy queen. The colors are so right and so cool. Mm -hmm. I love yeah, the I do wig. Love the color. I love the wig yellow with the blue dress. It just is extremely ill fitting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it's... doesn't fit and... any part of her. It's too short and too wide. And I'm it, being it honest, nothing. I don't know what's going on with this style of the wig. Like I see the curls. I <laughs> I kind of get it, but it kind of looks like a cake that's starting to melt like maybe a cake <laughs> left out in the rain one might say yeah like... <laughs> or it's like it's like almost like marie antoinette-esque but like a mm -hmm. mini marie antoinette it's just it's it's a well, who left a nolly out in the rain <laughs> oh. so then we have joey j next up joey j yes yeah. what do we think no wig um lady at the mall like i don't know it's fine <laughs> <laughs> like, like wow me or anything <laughs> like lady picking up her bratty kids at the mall i don't know trying to look cool yeah i'm this... all into androgyny but something about when they do turn around i think i see a disconnect in the padding of the lower half like the mm -hmm. ass and then just the no wig in the back yeah oh, it no, yeah. reads like a fitting to me personally it reads like something. yeah if 
feels unfinished. And I love what they said on the runway later. And I'm sure we're going to discuss Joey's non-wig wearing self oh, yes. a lot in this episode. The, whole jer- the entire journey of the no-wig wig. The whole, the whole journey, the, like the whole reason that Joey seems to be on the show because oh! they're, <laughs> ob- they're obsessed with this storyline is like, she doesn't wear wigs. She's not wearing but a wig. She's not wearing a wig. Is it, is it drag? Okay. My thing is you can totally not wear wigs. You, there's so, no wrong or right way to express gender. Oh. And uh, like you said, Aaron, androgyny drag is so cool. Bottom line, point blank, mm-hmm. this doesn't look good on her. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not the, it's, there's something it's not about it. Joe, like, it's just not it. No, this it's not is, it. This For your is, first this runway look, like, come on. Sharpay B side. <laughs> look, this is this is non equity Sharpay. I can't. It's no. It's not. Non equity Sharpay. This is non equity Sharpay's mom. That's just like in the background. Yeah, the her like, aunt, on. her fun aunt. No. Oh my. Well, not to harp on Joey too much. Next up, we have Rose coming out looking like a painted little masterpiece. What do we think? I loved it. I, I loved it too. I think this is a gag. Yeah, I was obsessed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So cool to see. I'm really impressed with her and Jan and Laguna Blue making like their a color, their whole statement piece. Mm-hmm. And it makes it more exciting when you see them in something totally different like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Love the earrings. The earrings, I was obsessed with. Like I watched this a second time and I didn't notice that they were um different shapes but just, I, I love it actually does look like someone sat there and like painted it with a paintbrush it looks very it does you know it's it does. totally just like nitpicking on rose's thing if the uh the bag if she hadn't had to hold it if perhaps it had had a metal chain sort of strap and could have been on her i think i would have liked it more i don't know mm. something about clutching the bag maybe it's me being a little oversaturated with purses already from Olivia, <laughs> but like, I don't know. At uh, least it matched the outfit. It did, but cumbersome purses are just like, they're well, not I think it. if it had a strap though, it would have been kind of awkward when she had to do the reveal at the end of the yeah. runway. So I think it worked but, being a clutch. That's know. fair. Nothing wrong with the look, it was fierce. Up next, we have our wonderful Miss Tamisha Iman. Tamisha. Ima. <laughs> I love her so much. She's she just ra- she's radiant. God, like I mean, yes. wow. she's glowing. Looking like mm-hmm. Cheryl Lee Ralph, and I, I love every second of it. And there's something so great about somebody who makes their own looks. They know how to form their body and show yes. their body off. But that's gore. I mean, that's gorgeous. That color is stunning on her. This mm-hmm. is one of the more simple looks of sure. anyone, and yet it works so well. I agree. It had wow factor. When she came around the corner, I yeah. literally like, I kind of squealed because I was like, oh my god, this is the drag I love, which is just good ass drag. And Good ass drag, for real. Yeah, yeah I think serving it. We're so used to like, you know, a, uh, a reveal or some, you know, uh, insane Latex moment. I think yeah, it's always some... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when someone just comes out in like a clean, well-made look that you know they put a lot of work into and it just looks stunning on them, sometimes that's enough for me. That's all I have to say. My whole thing is just like be entertaining, and that was yeah. so entertaining. I don't die for her wig though. I didn't love Tamisha's wig, but I agree. But the now, look was lovely. Speaking of entertaining, we have <laughs> next Utica Queen. <laughs> In what has to be, honestly, my favorite look I've seen from them yet. Mm, uh, it's my I, own I take. Really, I love it. I really like. I really like this a lot yeah, too. It was fun. I don't know if it was my favorite look she showed this week. I I I, I like another one she shows later a little more. Mm-hmm. But I did. I love the yeah her playing with color, playing with. Uh, I didn't notice until just now that the sides were see through. All right pause it right here oh, okay. like oh. i want i want the face I want because the face. i i want to know if i'm the only one who sees this but utica in certain angles she mm. looks like willem oh, God. i see that I can like see that. and recently i saw willem do she went live and i don't know she was in some sort of get up that was not dissimilar to this you know mm. it was definitely more creative and kooky and so maybe it's just I saw it recently, but she looks a lot like Willem to me. Not that she reminds me of her 
much otherwise. But she I looks love exactly queen. to me like uh, V. N. Cox in the Cinderella movie, the steps, the wicked stepsister. <laughs> yeah. To Brandy, Wally. she looks exactly that's like a, that's her. A it's crazy. <laughs> it's so crazy. But yeah, I love this look, and this is the queen I would say that grew the most on me this episode. Like I wasn't so sure episode one, and now I'm like, oh, I really like you. Mm-hmm. You, t- I, I also another lookalike. I believe Elliot with two T's looks just like Martha Plimpton, and you can't tell me anything. About that. <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone says like you Missy know, Kyle, you'll but never I think Martha it. Plimpton. <laughs> oh my fucking god! I just okay. like next time you see her, you're like, mm, okay. <laughs> Not Martha Flimpton. <laughs> and then our last of the looks for the lady. Where is, where is she? <laughs> where is she? She's late. As RuPaul oh. pantomime looks. Yeah, come on. Like it's like no. it's Kamara Hall. It's is easy, like you sure. said. It looks like you rented a Kate Middleton cosplay outfit. Well, yeah, yeah, there's no twist good. on it. There's no like you know what. There's nothing different about it. It's just the look. Yeah, personal taste, I really hate this. This is like probably my least favorite look actually of the whole uh, episode. I do not, is this even drag? Like, yes, your <laughs> sis, your sis I... and you're wearing a dress, I guess, but like, what? where is the, where is the elevation? Where's and the what's the point of you? What did you do besides put on clothes? I agree, yeah. I agree. It's, if I saw this in a club, I'd be like, what? Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> I came to see a drag queen. I want to see over the top, mama. Well, I don't want to see verse, like middle of the, Kate, middle of the road. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to see how their brain interprets fashion. And to me, that's just putting on fashion. That's not. Um, right. Well, touch the fashion, change it. your life is what I've always <laughs> heard. Did not change my life. Uh, I'm in exactly the same place. Listen, Maybe we walk around place. my house just saying, touch the fashion, change your life <laughs> way more often than we should. <laughs> you know, the, milk, the milk track, underrated. I'll say it. It was underrated. Underra- also, I just want to say I'm being really hard on Kimura right now, but I love Kimura. I think, oh, no, sure. It's just like, just. I like, think she could so, yeah. go all the way, honestly. And I hope that that's part of her narrative is that she turns this ship around mm-hmm. yeah we I keep agree. things positive on the show but we also keep opinions uh uh out and proud because <laughs> otherwise mm-hmm. why are we here um mm-hmm. and you know we're not gonna love everything that anyone wears in the show i mean even the queens i have loved on previous seasons there's always a couple of looks where i'm like oh, this is fine <laughs> this is okay yeah yes all right okay. next up we move into the vamp runway vamp 2021 <clears throat> and first up is denali and her helena bonham carter sheer realness i love this i love this yeah i like this I better than it. the first one but sure. why Way did better. she open the jacket is my question did the jacket need to be opened i like it better open do you i don't oh all right well i like showing off the bodice yeah. All right. <laughs> I like this. I mean, I look, like it's not an educated it. opinion, but it's an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just my silly gay opinion. That's all I got. I never said I was an expert. Next oh, up, we have back to the runway, Joey J. Yeah. Um, looking like a lesbian Janet Jackson backup dancer. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's what you're not wrong. You are not wrong. Um, I don't I'm gonna know. try to find something nice to say. The yeah, okay. Padding is Pause. the padding is fine. <laughs> Let me say something nice. Oh my uh, God. The padding's fine. It's fine. I agree. I just <laughs> wish it was fine. Here's the thing. I don't care about the no wig thing. That's fine. But can you add some texture to the hair? Like, like, like give it some height. Give it some. Do something, uh, Charlie. Charlie, <laughs> do something. You are on the on the world's stage for the thing that you do. Listen, like, I'm gonna be honest. You I don't know how this says vamp. I don't. I don't get it. It just says streetwalker to me. Like it's. I don't get it. But I do like this queen, and I hope uh, to see more from them. Yeah. Next up, we have our tall glass of dry sh- rosé. Rosé. I was about to call her Chardonnay. <laughs> what you going to call her? <laughs> what you call me? I love this. 
this is amazing. Oh, this is nuts. this is like okay, if you're gonna wear somebody's fucking couture gown that you're spending yeah. a lot of money on, make it drag. Make I mean, this mm-hmm. is yeah. out of this world. Like this is like all right, if we we're breaking that rule and just paying a lot of money for a cool designer, <laughs> yeah. you want to make it insane like this. Uh, this is so and cool. completely unique. Oh, yeah, totally. God. Yeah, I've never mm-hmm. seen anything like this on the show. I loved yep. her confidence in their talking. I was like, this is one of those looks that no one can say anything about because we'll just look at it. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I can't argue with that. <laughs> cannot argue with that. And just even the detail, the detailing around the neckline, I didn't even notice as much the I first do time. I love was... that detail. That yeah, I love that. The, crinkly... good. the pleating at the top of the neck, killer. I'm getting like also Megan noticed... Hilty Smash vibes from the bodice. From a, let's oh, be bad. let's be bad. bad. Yeah. I'll let her be as bad yeah. as she wants to. Oh. <laughs> also, girls are always bad with their boobs. The queens are always bad with their boobs when they have like exposed. It always comes down or shapes strangely. Mm-hmm. And Rose's was fucking perfect. It's like mm-hmm. that's w- where a, a female breasts often sit. That's where female breasts are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's where they are. I wouldn't, that's my I gay wouldn't expertise know. on women's I'm... breasts. <laughs> Next up, like we correct. have to the stage Tamisha Iman. Oh, I'm gonna say it that way until the end of time. <laughs> so good. Speaking of female breasts, hello Elvira. Hello, breasts. Look, I don't love a outfit constructed of hair or like <laughs> the pieces, but this is the serve. I I was living for this. Like, what a reference! What an execution! I just love Tamisha Iman. Got the shimmer on the titties. I mean, yeah, it's looking nice. It's really great. It's like she's just great. Like she's this, just doing drag, y'all. She's doing. Excellent she's just drag. doing drag, old school yeah. drag, and I love yeah. to see it. I love old school drag, like on the show, because you know, it needs to have the, its proper amount of respect. And I have a, I have a quick question, just like a, a mm. trivia thing. What? Who is the oldest queen to ever compete on the show? Is it Tamisha? Because she's forty nine. No, was or was it Tempest? Tempest de Jour, wasn't she older? Charlie she was... Hyde's. Oh, it Ooh. was Charlie Hyde's because she was 52. Four? Oh, <laughs> 50 something. Listen, she's 50 something. Like our description says, we're experts on some things, but mostly we're just gay. Mostly guys. we're gay. Like, <laughs> um... <laughs> this is your reminder we're just homos. <laughs> Like you bring up some Broadway divas, like you know, I've got things to say and I have facts. <laughs> I have got lots of facts for you. Um, Wait, but you know who's you know who's older than that's American drag You know who's older than Charlie Hyde's um, Lemon. What? Lemon, come on! <laughs> <laughs> you you better stop. That's hilarious. You better calm Hi, down. Lemon. <laughs> and then we have Kamora Hall. Oh God. I, like I did not like this wig. I'm a lot better say. than her first. E- I also like it better than the first. It's yes. It's at least sparkly and like elevated, and something <laughs> something is happening drag wise. Sure. But, yeah, 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 yeah. But this is such a bad wig. <laughs> like, what, what is with this wig? With that wig? <laughs> like for this kind of look, I want like a sleek, almost like miranda Priestley vibe kind of with the yeah, hair or just yeah. like something nice like slicked back it just it doesn't match <laughs> the top does not match the bottom i just it, it doesn't make sense to me like when i in when the, i cover up the head it looks stunning yeah um the just, colors are cool in the defense right. of the dolls i have heard from many of them that they like when they have like a wet hair look it starts mm. off wet and then because of the way production moves so slowly or girls yeah. are moving around or whatever they, then it it doesn't uh turn out that way on the runway i think blair <laughs> yeah, st Clair had that, that problem on all stars five and oh, that's gosh. what this looks yeah. like it looks like this was slicked and then it got dry <laughs> <laughs> well she you know uh, what are you gonna do um i just yeah i, just, I didn't yeah I, yeah I, I it's better than the first look but still it's not my fave yeah it's and, Good. Um, and then <laughs> our next queen. <laughs> our next queen to the stage. I mean, Kimora took time to get to the stage and to leave. She took her time. So our last queen for the vamp look, we have Utica Queen kind of doing a subversion of their first look. How do we feel about this Rita Repulsa moment? I loved I loved this more than the first one. 
Yeah, I love the so makeup. Cool. Oh God, it's so yeah. cool. And yeah. it's just like I again, yeah, like I don't want to see those other looks when this is the level of storytelling we can get. Oh if you're gonna have this kind of point of view where your first look is one thing and the second one is def a deflated evil version of it, that's yeah. so cool. I love I it. love the eye makeup. That's that's stunning. It's unique yeah. and you know, to see something truly unique on drag race at this point is always a special moment. This brought to mind when Asia O'Hara did the ball, you know, and she had that storyline of the balloons and then them popping and all oh, that and yeah, it followed yeah, yeah, yeah. through to the end. That was what I saw here and how brilliant that she did it on her own accord. Like that was her own mind working. It wasn't the assignment the week, you know? Yeah. Nobody else like did one outfit and then flipped it, new outfit. Well, she had I a whole narrative. I she had a, a whole this. journey. Yeah. Uh, I had a feeling she was going to really show out this week because I, the only thing I didn't love about the first episode was that a lot of queens, you know, they were set up to think they were just wearing their entrance look. And I think she never would have worn that as her entrance look if she knew she had to do a bunch of appearances in it. And so I think now she's actually able to show her fashion sense. We got a better feel for her this week. And I, I was, I was into it. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So which looks stood out to each of you? Which ones did you enjoy the most? Mm. Or I guess uh, maybe you can even just go by queen. Cause like for me, I'm going to say Utica queen stole this mini challenge. For me. You know, from the first look to the second look, I just, I was, it elevated my opinion of Utica and yeah, she won it for me. For me, it was Rosé. I agree with Zach. I would say I also, with both of you, really, I, I love Utica. She really uh, leveled up in my mind, but I oh, sure. really thought Rosé, Rosé had the coolest look, I think, that we've seen on the season so far. Yeah, it just, something about her, it was like kind of 80s, kind of just like modern pop art. It was just, it was just a more an aesthetic that's going to be my taste, honestly. But I did love uh, Utica. Like she also killed it. But I was just, especially after last time we saw Rosé just being like a pink monster, it was nice to see some variety with the looks. And so I was, I was very impressed. I was into it. Yeah. Well, yeah. So after this, RuPaul announces that the queens will write an original verse to the track Phenomenon and work together to choreograph a number on the main stage. Rosé is excited to show off her voice. And Joey says he is not a singer or a rapper, but he is gay. So, and you know, it does, it, and it works. It works. He leans into the that gay. That was funny. Yeah. And then, of course, we have the classic trope of Drag Race, which is a bunch of queens um, not wanting to take the. No one wants to just like be that bitch that just takes the reins and says, "I'm going to run the rehearsal," because they're all trying to. Well, be, be I dare nice say Denali whatever. wanted to be that girl, <sighs> but it's like, did the other girls let her, you know? Uh, yeah, it's just, well... I love this moment. This was my entire favorite moment of the whole show. It was so fun. And it reminded me of a lot of the earlier seasons of Drag Race, you know, where like, it's a real argument that they're just having very oh, yeah, organically. And uh, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Oh yeah, it was definitely just happening. It, it was not produced. It was not a produced moment. Um, I you could just see the. I just want someone to just to be like, guys, can we all just like shut up and just like agree that this person's gonna be in charge because it's actually taking longer. Like I always feel like there's one queen that's just in the middle with their head in their hands, just like this is gonna drive me to kill someone, and I always feel for that person because I would be that person. Um, Same. That would be me. I would be like. What the hell is going on here? Somebody... Especially if you're not a dancer, you're like, why are we wasting so much time and getting nothing done? So And yeah. it's so real. Like anyone that's ever been in like theater school knows oh, this exact moment is like, oh God, these people really think that they are the ones. They oh, when someone pops up, actually, I have a, a different idea. Hear me out. And it's always like a 10 minute tangent and then nothing changes. And we're like, cool. So that was 10 minutes of our life. We were never getting back. Thank you so much, <laughs> Becky. Thank you, Becky. Um, yeah. And I gotta say, Rose was the Becky of the episode. <laughs> she kept just having ideas that like they weren't even bad ideas but they 
didn't make the number better and the idea that Denali had was perfectly fine if they had just been like cool great sounds awesome and I feel like this is like happened this happened last season too with um Rockham with their whole choreography shenanigans so it's just funny to see this trope happen over and over and over again my favorite is also like the backtracking of after you know that you've overstepped and then being like, oh, what was that to Misha? Oh, I love that. Listen to her. That's a good idea. Like, <laughs> yes. what? Hilarious. Stop. Girl, stop. <laughs> um, what do you think of this song in general? Do you Did you like last week's song better or this one? What was I don't last remember week's? last week's at all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ah! <laughs> Well, in fairness, half of the verses last week I couldn't understand. So uh, in my yeah. brain oh my tells me to lean towards this one, to be told. All right, honest. hold on. Speaking of that, there's a meme going around or like a, a short little video that somebody has. I mean, there's several of them, but people have <laughs> dubbed over Candy Muse's solo verse with, I swear to God, with Donald Duck, just like going. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, God. <laughs> no. Uh... No, but also that's now listen. Funny. I'm so sorry at how many times I've watched it and laughed because it was funny. <laughs> listen, those memes are meant to make us laugh, and this is quarantine. And you know what? Anything that makes you chuckle. And we love Any Candy reason. Muse. I have, I have nothing but love for Candy Muse, but she she had some mush mouth on her that verse. Like I remember looking at my roommate and saying, Do you have any idea what she just said? <laughs> and he, he did not either. So we were we were not alone. So I guess my answer by default is I prefer this week's song, which is mm -hmm. Phenomenon. <laughs> As opposed to last week's, which was... I think it's You're a Winner, because no, it, or, uh, it, was, it was something about winning. Oh, congratulations. Remember, it's like, congratulations, you're number one. And that's all I got. I don't care where it yeah, well. All I can remember is Ooh. Simone's verse and not even the whole verse. <gasps> yeah, that was sickening. So I, I am living for Simone. Again. Yeah, she was one of the only ones from that group that I'm like, oh yeah, I can't wait to get you back on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rest of them were fine, but I just like, yeah, that episode was whack. Well, like this number, I feel like everyone, like not to, I feel like I'm dragging her this week and I really don't mean to. Other than Kimura, I thought everyone kind of really served it in their verse. Um, whereas last week there was maybe... Like I liked Olivia, I liked Simone, and I liked. Well, that's all I got. I can't remember a third one right now. Tina, Tina was pretty. Tina, good last yeah, week. Yeah, 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 Tina. yeah, yeah. Tina was great. And that's kind of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no shame. No shame. No, no shame. We love, we love queens. Love queens. Um, I think it's just, it's just a thing. Like I think on Drag Race, there's always just that number when they do two numbers that's just better than the other number. It's just like it's gonna happen. One and song I, was better. Yeah. Yeah. Like I had the same thing when they did the Kitty Girl Challenge on All Stars Three, and I thought I was that just the um, that. say what. I was just thinking that. Yeah, I thought yeah. the 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 returning queen team had like an infinitely better song. Like I I thought they should have actually won that challenge, um, and so it's just weird. So I saw people saying that they thought this number wasn't as good as last week, and I just I I don't agree. Yeah, that's literally insane to say. That. <laughs> I don't think we're watching the same show. It's crazy. Yeah, no, that's crazy. Maybe they were watching Drag Race UK. <laughs> There's a lot of drag race in their defense. It can get them all confused. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> so we have already touched on this, but uh, while they are getting ready for the main stage, Kimora talks about the pressure she feels um, and the, she appreciates the support of the other queens because she opens up about having that boyfriend who is not supportive and she keeps her drag life separate from her personal life. How do y'all <laughs> feel about that? Because I thought that was a... I don't know, unfortunately, timely and relevant conversation that came up. God. I, I hear this all the time online that drag queens have a hard time dating. And I, we haven't seen a queen who says that so drastically, they separate mm -hmm. their lives. Yeah. Um, I can already see the untucked moment happening when the boyfriend like sends in a video and tells her, I'm so proud of you. Like I, I can already like <laughs> see it happening. Um, but in this moment, I was like, ooh, yikes. And I mm. I also want I wanted to cut away to some other queen just going like, oh god, baby. 
that's, that's not good. That's not good. Where's Rose? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rose doesn't care. <laughs> She's like, what? I'm doing my makeup. <laughs> And after those six hours, uh, they transition over to the main stage because it is time to see their outfits. This week's judges are Michelle Visage, Ross Matthews, and Miss Nicole Byer. <laughs> Nicole Byer, oh, which always a treat. Always I also treat. think I also think that she should become a permanent panel member or at least one of the rotating ones because yeah like, i on. have not had so much fun as an audience member watching the judges panel as this week in a long oh and her time. look was amazing i love on top look. of that she's writing her own material and you know it <laughs> and like yeah she was well, slaying the game you can just tell on how the much jokes. she loves drag like it just it, it just bleeds you through feel it. She's yeah yeah you can feel how much she loves it. You can like she's such a good comedian, so she's yes. great at one-liner quips. She's a great listener. Like she's just vibing off of what Ross has given her, and then ping-ponging with that. She's yeah. an improviser and a stand-up comedian. Yeah, who loves drag. Like she should she's definitely. Perfect. She should be the Todrick from now on. Like oh, keep her please. on. Come on. Thank higher, you. Bring her for the comedy for challenges. Season. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, truly, fun. yeah. Actually, kind of yeah. funny that Nicole Byer was the guest judge this week because last night I was watching a documentary called um, "The Road to Broad Show Business: The Road to Broadway," and there's this one part oh, where they're talking and <laughs> they're talking to a, a girl on the street that's talking about the musical taboo and crying about why it's how it's closing. And I go, "Wait a second, is that Nicole Byer?" And I thought, Zach, you're being racist. That's not Nicole Byer. And then I go just Google, like, Nicole Byer. <laughs> Show business, my boy. It was her. So it was just, what? like, totally random. What? Totally <laughs> random. So it's on Amazon Prime if you want to watch it. Um, she's just, like, I've a random. I've seen this documentary. Yeah, the 2003 see... one about Carolina Change. And yeah, about, Wicked, yeah, Wicked. And Car- yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicole. That is crazy. Yeah, I had seen it before too, but I, I guess I didn't know Nicole Byer back then, so I didn't think to be like, oh my god, that's her. And so it was just totally random. And then I found a tweet from her from like 2018 saying, my first film credit was as woman crying on the street about taboo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked to my core by that. That's so funny. Wow, so it's all just been typecasting for her so far, I guess. (laughs) That that is incredible. She was just in in the pop culture this week with me. Like, she she just couldn't even help it. It's all just coming together. (laughs) All right, so the queens performed their number. Phenomenon, as we have discussed. Uh, How do we feel about the performance overall? That's good. That was good. I thought it was definitely better than last week. I thought this was a much stronger, like, cohesive group um than the other one personally i thought they all got to shine i thought the staging was better than last week's too um i also just love the overall looks too they looked like a girl group. yeah mm-hmm. yeah and the stakes are just so much higher this week like it really did feel last week like they all really thought they were the shit and they were kind yeah. of phoning it in <laughs> and this is like these girls have something to prove yeah, i think it did benefit them like i think it, them actually being the underdogs made them perform at a higher level i don't know mm-hmm. it was good because mm-hmm. they felt like they were behind and now it is our run way time category is we're here we're sheer <laughs> get used to it Oh, man. And our first up out of the gate is Miss Denali, which, by the way, I mean, I'm looking at the list right now, and I am just now realizing these queens came out in alphabetical order. Maybe it's just me, but I'm I'm simple like that. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, that's uh, fun. Yeah, I don't love so, this, I'm going to be honest. What do we think about Denali's thing? I didn't like it either. I don't they said like Georgia either. O'Queef. <laughs> 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 I, mean, I love the the earrings matching the hair like that's all cute and yeah. i love the paint and all of that um just the dress like it i don't the silhouette of it was just kind of lumpy and dumpy i just i it wasn't my favorite yeah I agree it doesn't tell that. me anything yeah just, like, i, was like, I don't know where she's is... going or anything yeah. except maybe she's ice skating which is like <laughs> Okay, maybe that's all of her outfits. Is maybe she's going ice skating? <laughs> I, I just I don't get this. 
Yeah, it wasn't yeah, my favorite. I like the colors, but that's about it. Her face is beat. And I oh, love the wig. The she looks gorgeous. You know, up, uh, the face up and their athleticism in the number was incredible. But I didn't like that look. No. Next out the gate, we have Joey J. I want to say his name in some weird way. Joey J. Oh, my. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is very like... Uh, like Chris Jenner going to a sex party. Like, I don't know. Like, it's, I don't, I don't know. Uh, it's fun. I like it better than either of the things on the runway challenge. Same. And yet, it's still <laughs> from a non equity production of Cabaret. <laughs> this is like a non equity production what? of like Victor Victoria. Like, I don't even, I don't yeah. Even know. Like, yeah. This is when this that's... is when the hair really started to point out to me, where I was like, hmm. Okay. I heard someone say, you know, Joey J's outfits, they all kind of end up looking the same. And I think a large portion of that has to do with the fact that they don't wear the wig. Because the wig is like one extra piece that goes with an outfit that can make it look so different from right. another look. Well, and, I wish she had, had a know. better like headband. Like she has this like black basic headband. I'm like, why not have a... Uh have some sequins on it have like some of the fringe something to like add some interest to the head it just looks like a black it looks like black duct tape just like wrapped around her head and then like trimmed it it, just, it looks like nothing yeah i heard that's where they put her mic pack <laughs> oh. yeah um <laughs> That's <laughs> really impressive. Um, yeah, just I, that's it, what it looks like. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it does. It just looks unfinished. I love what Joey said to the judges about like when I look in the mirror and I am not wearing a wig, I see myself, and it's like, yeah, yeah. I get to see my faggoty gay self doing drag, which is yeah. so beautiful. Sure. But this is a drag competition, and like you got to look around at the other queens coming around that corner and be like, okay, I need to elevate this more somehow. Like this is just not enough. I just like, feel like maybe, if you knew you would... didn't wear a wig for either of the other two runways, I would wear one for the main stage at least. Like I wouldn't do it for all three runways. It was just a, that was a big swing, big swing. Next yeah. up is Miss Kamora Hall, <laughs> and now this is one of the situations where I think from the neck down, I love it. But <laughs> I'm so sorry that these earrings are just like giant and the hair, dare I say the hair is too high? <laughs> it I doesn't... know, what a strange comment to give to a drag queen, but it's Bizarre. true. It's like something's really <laughs> off here. It reminds me of like if you would like take a Barbie head off of a Barbie and put it on the body of another one and be like, wait, that's not the right head for that body. Because the look is beautiful, but it just looks like a, a the head belongs to a different look. It's just, it's... Yeah, you know what it is? It's share <laughs> neck down, Dolly Parton head up. Yes. Yes. And yes. those are two totally different Vibes. styles of yeah. diva and clothing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, you nailed it. You nailed yeah, it. That's, share that's, that's it. and Dolly. Let me tell yeah, you, Michelle Visage. Neck down. It's beautiful. Michelle Visage does not make me crack up too often, but her saying she was starring in Roots, like that, that made me chuckle, I guess. <laughs> that was very funny. I'm like, come on, Michelle. Hilarious. Yeah, just the earrings. I mean, I, I love a big earring. Let me don't get it twisted. But they're so big. They're so those big. They're frisbees. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you need like sleek hair with those or something just to. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, props to her for dragging it up and like doing more than that sure. Kate Middleton look, but it's like, yes. this is not quite right. She was definitely doing drag. Definitely doing and drag, but... Speaking of doing drag, Rosé comes out in ruffles and yeah, How, what do we think? It was fun. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It yeah, was my least I favorite of the day. Yeah, I like the Ditto. colors, but like let's be real this is what is the silhouette like this is yeah, 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 this yeah, is yeah. this is hodgepodge to me oh hodgepodge uh -huh. mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. really a lot uh, happening and it's not um very flattering oh it's not flattering at all it looks i mean i'm so sorry it looks like christmas wrapping to me 
like the main part of the outfit. It looks like crinoline that you wrap something yeah. up in. Well, I just, it has, I don't know. Well, it has all that texture that just makes her look like three inches wider on either side of her. And I just don't understand. Yeah. It's and like it's it's not cinched in enough at the waist to like make it make sense for me. It just I I I it just wasn't my favorite. Yeah, I don't. It like looks that. like it looks like she's gonna do a Mama Mia number in that. <laughs> if I'm being honest, <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. it is very super trooper. Mm-hmm. Is this a non-equity production of Mama Mia? I don't know. I mean, it just it just says ABBA. That's all. <laughs> just says ABBA. <laughs> <laughs> And then we have back to the stage, Miss Demisha Iman in my favorite Demisha. look of the night. Oh my god, I mean, this is my gorgeous. Fucking god. When RuPaul this gasps, so like you know, like you're 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 in good hands. Like you're, well, you're, yeah. you're I can see RuPaul wearing this. Uh, RuPaul does this, especially. Well, watch her wear a look seasons. next season. She'll wear this no. look next season. No. I no. I'm calling it too. Oh, Probably yeah. on Australia season one. Is she hosting that? Yes. Oh, she's quarantining currently down in oh, New Zealand. Wow. No that. way, that really? Oh, that's about a week I, ago. I didn't think she was going to host it. Wow. I yes. didn't either. That's hot tea. <laughs> Love hot she's tea. quarantining. Well, her husband is from Australia. And so um, like, she's been looking for any excuse to get down there. And they finally have enough traction. And she'll be able to do her spot on Australian accent. So that's like, you know, you got to do it. <laughs> yeah well you, uh, well you know what's funny is this also like coincides with courtney act has gone back to sydney because she's in quarantine right now as well but like mm, that's not happening like no that's not happening <laughs> <laughs> if you know you know yeah i don't, I don't now, see courtney act being back like to a, the queens you know. yeah Oh back to the queens at hand we have to the stage utica oh my I gosh in some really <laughs> fair awesomeness please I have really an opinion like we just asked that for the panel please have an opinion i really hate this i don't like looking at it i don't like the colors i don't understand the the lion king cat makeup that Ooh. is like bleeding in i really like utica i thought i thought utica in the performance was such a standout yeah and this Me too. is um this is a Thorgy Thor B side. This looks like like a Stevie Nicks fever dream, like a creature that would appear to her in her bedroom in the middle of the night. Like um, it's, it's... to me the 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 painting on the face, it looks, you know, very impressionistic. It looks to me like she was doing like I don't know, like she was a painting from the Renaissance. Sure. That's kind of what I got from the whole theme. But like people have said before, if you have to explain what your look is, then it didn't work, did it? Mm-hmm. You know? She needs to Stevie so Nicks. I love this, this personally, outfit. but I don't have the best taste. Stevie Nicks this uh, outfit. Honestly, oh Nicks is the Stevie landslide. Nicks cosmetics in a different way on that face. Because I didn't know. Oh! Came together. <laughs> The landslide brought her down, girl. <laughs> oh get, my get god. <laughs> all right, so now that we've seen all the runway looks, what do we feel about the queens now? Who's in the top? Who's in the bottom for you? Like who were our top and bottoms? The Are yeah, we basing 100%. this off of the the whole episode or just the runways? Let's do the whole episode. Up until mm-hmm. this point, who's Who's done it for you? Do you want to go first, Tom? For me, it is Utica. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm look. I'm a kooky queen. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a great kooky queen entrance line. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm here. Uh, uh, <laughs> season fourteen. Didn't someone uh, have an entrance oh. like that where it was just like, ooh, and it's all. Oh, they I did. mean, Tempest gave birth to a baby. <laughs> that was so wow. wild. <laughs> um, Wait, so you, okay, so you like you like Utica. I do. This, I really like. I said she grew the most in my eyes for this episode. So maybe at this point, I was looking at her with some kaleidoscope rose glasses. But like, I think she. I think she nailed it. You know, I was so surprised at her from the performance, especially. I was not expecting her to serve it like that. And yeah, 
So I, I rewound great. the part where Nicole Byer is like laughing at her verse probably three times just because the pure joy on Nicole Byer's face which is like what a fucking weirdo just yeah. like you could just tell she was having a ball um uh wait so who would your other top two be other than Utica um Rosé because I mean she did slay I'm, I I can't deny that and then Tamisha because she literally has already won my entire heart mm, okay 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 I really liked Utica as well. She really had a big arc for me this episode. Mm. Probably the best performance, in my opinion, in the song. But I really hated that outfit, so that drops her for me. And I didn't love Denali's outfit, but Denali's performance was really good, and the outfit was at least a little stronger. And then, so Denali is in my top two, but this episode belongs to Tamisha, 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 First of all, they were reading her for her performance, and that performance was so good. Uh, what yes. is? Yeah, I was going to bring this up. I yeah. felt like they are like waiting to give her the spotlight in like an episode or so because they just assume she's going to be there a while. Because I feel like they easily could have put her in the top two, and it would have made yes. perfect sense. Um, mm-hmm. Like, because she was—it wasn't a bad performance. Like, I, I I rewatched it, and I I was at least at peace with her not being in the top two because I I do agree. I kind of saw her performing at like ninety five percent, not a hundred percent. But I'm also like, she was still fierce as fuck, and I think her runway being so strong should have pointed her towards being in the top yes. two because compared to Rose, she had an infinitely better runway look. Or Denali. Or Denali, or Denali, yeah. But like, I, I think Denali's performance was like the best performance of the number. Um, but her, yeah, runway was not that great. Uh, yeah, my top two would have been Timmy Shaman and Denali. That would have been my top two. Yeah, same for me. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And who was your bottom? <gasps> oh, Kamora. Just, yeah, I'm gonna say it. It was, it was Kamora. I, I, you know. Yeah, Kamora is definitely in the bottom. Although I did really. I really love the way she responded to the very harsh critiques. <laughs> she yeah. really turned it around for me there when she was sure. like, they were like, there's look around this composition. And she said, where? I was like, okay. <laughs> a very, it reminded me of Alyssa Edwards in her stand up with uh, uh, Alaska. She's like, we are in the presence of amazing queens tonight. Where? Where? <laughs> but I, I really thought it was very classy and very made me really like her more as a queen because we are now at the point on Drag Race where these girls come on and they're like, I have been working my whole mm. life for this moment and to hear that I disappointed you. Yeah. Not... And for yeah. Kamora to just take it in stride and be like, yep, I fucked up this week, but oh well, we're going to have fun, right? I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm now really, really intrigued by you. But yeah, she was definitely the bottom and then if there were a bottom two who would you put with her joey j oh oh yeah 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 for sure and it simply is because again i don't all right it's gonna sound like i have a problem with them not wearing wigs but i only have a problem problem with it no 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 i but i don't except from behind because i'm sorry when you turn around and we're seeing the boy haircut on the back i see a guy with a woman's body it sounds weird like does she need to like contour the back of her neck like that sounds really odd to say but like just to like make it appear more feminine like maybe it sounds weird i've never thought i'd have to do this ever um but i remember having that thought like does she need to have makeup on the back of her neck is that what it is like it was yeah it was something when she turned her head the outfits just have to be better. Like if <laughs> that one hundred, that's also like, a solid. Like you, suggestion. like Sasha Velour, so often doesn't wear wigs. But yeah. what's happening neck down is so cool that you are your eye is drawn to the neck down. Yeah, and it it's on like, as well. She paints well too, so it's well. not her paint. Do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Joy J's paint is really good. Yes, yeah, it's it's just good the, paint. that the hair is not working. It doesn't like, work with those outfits. And it's like, if you're going to do... This is their thing that bothered me with the hair. If you're going to do the no wig thing, okay, cool. But can you at least differentiate the way your natural hair is styled, at least for each runway, just so it 
looks different because it was just styled the exact same way for every single time so it just it it can't help but be a little boring if someone wore the uh, much like we learned last year with Aiden Zane if you wear the same wig over and over again that gets boring too so when you wear your natural hair the same way every single time it just it just visually I did get bored with it and bottom line we're watching the show to be entertained and to be wowed and if I could <laughs> do that look in my living room then you know like you want something on the head to wear a hat i don't know but make it cool does anybody still still wear a hat hat. (laughs) i'll drink to that yeah um (laughs) and if they had lip sync who do you think would have got home uh kamora versus joey j it depends on the lip sync song yeah it was so weird though watching uh Kimura in that number because it was just like I don't even know how to, I don't want to I don't want to hold on her. I all right look I don't have I don't have it written but like she walks out and she's like Kimura Hall Chicago's Mackie doll oh the verse was um, not good first of all hold on that. but what I think about that verse I yeah. actually I liked it not that it was good writing, but I enjoyed (laughs) it as like a really fun drag moment. And it reminded me personally of Roxy Andrews with her, you know, I'm Roxy Andrews and I'm here to make it clear. No, I don't think it's like the same, but I think it could be something we quote. No, I won't do it. It doesn't have that many lyrics and it's funny. Look, I'm gonna make it it happen. No, stop I am it. gonna make Kamora happen. Uh, I don't mind Kamora. Like the first week, I thought she was one of the most stunning queens in the room. Like, let me make it clear: I have nothing against Kamora. It was just a bad week for Kamora. Like, that's you know undeniable. I just thought she. Uh, I. It's just like even like her. Like you know, we're all from the theater. When you learn, when you dance, you have to have energy to the tips of your fingers, and she did not have energy to the tips of her hands. As long as like. <laughs> Mm-hmm. that's all i have to fingers. say <laughs> these are my yeah. spirit fingers <laughs> well all right so then denali and rose are named the top queens of the week yes, yes. and all the other queens are named safe denali and rose lip sync to britney spears if you seek amy and denali's named the winner what are our feelings about all of this that all checks out it all made sense to me Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Did you watch the I was opera? thrilled to see this song. Like, oh yeah, I know, woo! great drag song. I was great like, okay, song. we're getting the good tracks this season. All right, all right, all right. Got I'm Lindsay Lohan, with... and now this a Lindsay I'm, I'm... Lohan. So Trixie and Lohan. Priyanka. We're talking about this lip sync, and I was like, oh, this is the perfect way to describe this. Priyanka was like, I was looking at them, and I was like, looking at Rosé, you're like, that's New York drag, and looking at Denali, you're like, that's Chicago drag, and it was so fun to see that. It was like Denali was living in the moment. She was being Britney Spears. She was going through it. And Rose was doing like, I do this number in the clubs all the time. And here's my winking, like, um, <laughs> mm-hmm. like comedy version of it. Sure. So, yeah. And I thought Denali really, really dropped into this. Oh, my God. But I am also going to point out one of the things that uh, Trixie and Priyanka mentioned in their review of it as well. They mentioned. They get annoyed when queens go into the box routine, you know, that I agree. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> and yeah. but like I me personally, I I know a queen from Central California. Her name's Kara Coronado. And years ago, this queen like introduced that to me, like as a this is a drag queen trope. And like she makes fun of it all the time. She like makes fun of it of herself and <laughs> I think it's hilarious when queens do it. Like, I don't take it seriously in the slightest when a queen goes into this little box routine. I think it's it's funny and campy. And that's what I got from that moment. But both of them slayed the lip sync. And I do agree as well. I I think that it happened right. I also think that they are setting up the storyline for Rosé to, like, come back with a vengeance. I do think they did her really well this week like they um 
they made her look impressed. I don't know if she made, made herself look impressive, but like they didn't edit her to look like, oh, you came so close, but you didn't get it, you know? So I, I do feel like she's going to do well this season. I feel like she's going to be here a while because she's so funny too. It's all I hear about her is how funny she is. So whenever we get to like Snatch Game and actual like performance acting challenges and stuff, I think she's going to be even more impressive. So yeah, I think I was... Happy with both of these queens. I think both of these queens I could see in the final four, um, depending on how the season shakes out. I was just going to say, if we're going based on last year's formula, where they had the same thing happen, three of those queens ended up in the final four. Sherry Pie, Jada, Gigi Good, and Widow. But Widow was really a good competitor as well. Yeah. 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 Uh, so well that well, that brings us to a, a thing. If you had to guess your final four so far, Tim, who would your final four be? Tamisha Iman and Tamisha Iman. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Cool, cool. Say it All again. Right. All right. <laughs> I would say Tamisha. Um, <laughs> Tamisha. Tamisha. And Tamisha. Iman. Tamisha. Tamisha. Oh um, my Simone God. for sure. Mm. And then I would guess maybe Tina Burner and Denali. I'm going to throw Denali in there. Well, so we gave our final four predictions based on the first episode. So based on the first episode, Aaron had said Candy Muse, Simone, Gottmik, and Tina Burner. I had said not that different, but Candy Muse. I forgot about Gottmik. I forgot about Gottmik. I would would Um, throw them in there too. Yeah, I'm still not sure how it's going to shake out, but we shall see. Mine was Candy Muse, Simone, Olivia Lux, and Tina Burner. But then later I'm like, are they going to let three New York queens into the final four? I'm not so sure. Um, And after this week, I would easily maybe take out Olivia Lux and put in Denali in her spot. So I don't know. It's still in in process. Olivia to me is going to get the old Heidi in closet. uh, Yeah, I can see her being a solid fifth or sixth place kind of thing. Yeah. I think that's what's going to go down. But she could surprise. She could, like, she kill could the performance challenges. So so far, she's really been turning it out. And her looks look very polished so far. Even the yeah. ones I don't love, I'm still like, but it looks, you know, it looks good. It doesn't look bad. Everything's right. Everything's in place. Just Mama. get that purse to match. <laughs> Make, get the purse to match. It drives me nuts. Like, I'm cool Bob with the gimmick. Bob is going to get on her ass for it. Oh, you know, Bob. like. Oh, Bob. Uh, he's found his new victim. Uh, yeah, I, I love I love a gimmick. I, if she wants to have a little purse for every look, that's great. But can you make it match the look? That's all I ask. Like, just come on, come on. Well, Tim, thank you so much for joining us for today's episode. Uh, Thanks would you for like, having me. Of course, we we had three guys today. Uh, would you like to do any uh, plugs for social media? Anything you have working on? I love to plug. Uh, you can follow me at <laughs> I'm Team plugging Marie. right now. Oh, oh, oh God. God. Prove it. Prove That's why your room's dark. <gasps> oh. That's for our Patreon viewers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, you can follow me at Team Murray06 on all platforms. And I would love it if you listen to Slumber Party Podcast. Mm. Uh, I'm host of that show and I interview drag queens, comedians, and Broadway performers about their slumber party experiences growing up. And it's when fun. is this coming out? Thank it's you. coming out Wednesday. <gasps> okay, so my guest the following week will be Trixie Mattel. So you'll yeah, have to come. Nasty. Yeah. And then I've got another uh, really iconic drag race queen who I can't announce yet. But yeah, okay. come come check it out if you like the queens. I have a quick question for you. Based on your slumber party show, who is uh, who's your definitive Alpaba? <laughs> oh, oh, here we every go. Time, every time I'm on you a thought podcast, you were gonna get out of an episode without talking about <laughs> who is it? Wrong. wrong. That's good. <laughs> who is it and why? <laughs> I would have to say, based on the critiques mm-hmm. and the performance at hand, <laughs> um, and the performance and, and the runway, I would have to say Tamisha Iman. Ah! Lovely. <laughs> I didn't know she played Alphaba. <laughs> I'm dying. That was that was the only answer we were gonna accept. 
Oh my god. The true Adina. answer is is uh, is Adina. Adina is my one and my true. I saw her do it no. when I was 18 no. and it like I always say people love to come for her for the vocals, but whatever. But she's, she's the original. Such, I'm kind she's of She's an original and she's such an underrated actress. Like I her... fell in love with her again last night from watching that Broadway documentary because there was so much like wicked she's rehearsal everything. footage and show and I was like, "Oh, wasn't she just great though?" Like just having a whole moment. Um yeah uh the one thing i'm always obsessed with and i still don't my friend claims this almost happened i would have been obsessed with this not in a good way but i would have watched the bootlegs was that Lindsay lohan tried to get into wicked around like 2009 or something like that and and apparently the wicked producers just very said, flatly said we're not interested at this time, but thank you so much for your interest in the show. Oh, because they were like, God. we don't need your name to sell the show. Like, we're we're fine. We are fine. Yeah. Also, like, <laughs> it's one thing to be a celebrity and do celeb casting, but sure. like, we literally cannot put you in this show. There are union rules that we know you're not going to follow. <laughs> you, gotta sh you gotta show up, first of all. Oh, do you want to play God. Nessa? Like, maybe we can get you in as Nessa. <laughs> that's what i'm sure i'm sure she was trying to be i mean what do you think she was trying to be glinda or no Alphabet? she was, she was she trying to be Alphabet. she was trying to be Alphabet. you're lying you're lying to me no. i can't say who the source was but someone who worked with the show and they said that it was like behind the scenes gossip they would like chuckle about because it was just like so shady that they were like we're fine <laughs> we're <laughs> so good much. thank you we're although good. i guess i would pay 125 dollars to see Lindsay lohan as well yeah would i go see that yeah 100%. like i'm gay like you know of course i would go watch it we love Lindsay lohan but so I, say. I am defying gravity stop it stop it <laughs> take it down my personal my personal <laughs> alphabet um uh, it's one of two. I'm going to go with my one, though. I'm going to go with one. It's Shoshana. I am a Shoshana Bean. I am. I mean, she's great. I am no, a, she's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, she's my everything. I love her. Yeah, she yeah. is one of my all-time favorite vocalists, honestly, period. And I've had the pleasure of seeing her, not in Wicked, but I've had the pleasure of seeing uh, Shoshana perform probably well, you like love Shoshana, times. right? Isn't she like one of your, her. like, Colleen's? She actually, she the town she grew up in is like two hours away from where I live and she goes back every year and she does a benefit concert to raise money for her alma mater and so I've had the joy of going every year and you know watching her perform Spectrum and she used to be mine fresh off of Broadway you know and I just did you like okay I got a hard question did you like her in Waitress? Yes, I don't think she fit the part, but vocally, bitch was the best singer. And she always is. Wow. Uh, she uh, always mm -mm. is. Don't Stop. come for the me. Voice? She always is the best vocalist. The voice not on that score. Undeniable. I don't think on that score. I don't think on that score. Oh! Yes. I'm no. sorry. Her no. she used to be mine at the no. Broadway world. That is definitive. I'm sorry. Oh my God. I'm getting it's a hard out. no for me. Um, but I love Shoshana. Love Shoshana. Just for that score. I don't think her type of voice is like the voice I want to hear in that score. I love I Shoshana. That. Let me make that clear. That. She's a queen. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would listen wow. to that hoe sing fucking anything. That I, oh, I'll her, listen to it. Her voice is one of my all-time favorite voices. Wait, but Aaron, who's your other one? Who's your other one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eden Espinosa. Uh, I uh, interviewed no, Eden on my you know, podcast, and it was a great thing. Mm. Hold on. But the reason it's her is because of her no good deed. When Ooh, I was a yeah. little baby gay and YouTube was new and I was surfing around <laughs> watching all the Elphabas as they literally oh, were sure. doing of it. Of course. Yeah, uh, yeah. When she did her Fiero, and we all know what we're talking about, oh, yeah. where she mm -hmm. takes it mm -hmm. up, literally mm -hmm. it has stayed with me and it will stay with me for my entire life. And I was lucky enough to see Eden in um, Studio 10's production of a Vita Ooh. just like two, three years ago. Bitch, everything. Everything. Eden! Eden, if everything. you're listening to this, he supports you for he loves you. Yeah. He's oh something. <laughs> He's one of you. If not, yeah. how could he love me? Uh, that is everything. I love her so much. Yes. I saw her in Brooklyn on Broadway when oh, I was wow. in high school, and I 
was so my I couldn't believe the kind of vocals that were happening at me and then <laughs> at I, me <laughs> I yes. it was they were happening at me and I cold emailed her Stop. saying hi I'm a fan is there <laughs> any way you'd be on my podcast and she said yes and when I tell you that she is the most joyous like easiest person to talk to in the world i was like listeners if, if you want to dive into summer party i <laughs> highly suggest you start with that episode because she's just she's the joy and the i love this woman I'm, you know I'm what other episode right i love this. of slumber party was your christina bianco episode that was that was the fun one. Oh, oh thank the, you that was a really fun one christina and Paris, she, she's a true talent that one yeah, we, we love it. She's been on, uh, she has done recordings for Drag Race herself. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, she sure has. I remember clocking Fun. her voice when she was on All Stars 3 doing the... Um, Julie Andrews? The, she did the Celine and the Dolly and... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. I Fun like, fact. I know who I that is. I don't think we got into it on the episode with Christina, but I used to be her booker. I, I, no, so, I think you did say that. Or did I you, talk about it? I think so. Or maybe I, I just knew told that. you when we were on our yeah I would maybe call that, venues oh, and be that like, might have been it I, I was like I know this though like I already knew that yeah it Tim, was so wild you are so gay and I am <laughs> so happy to have met you same uh, please same come Aaron. back there's so much more drag race to talk about I know now there's so many cities I have to um travel to I have mm-hmm. to come to Washington I have to listen come to listen Washington. don't come to we Washington where I live is not exciting Zach and I are planning on meeting up in Nashville later this year okay. though and that could be a thing yeah, 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 actually yeah. I was gonna do my stand-up show in Nashville before the pandemic so oh, maybe we'll no. all, where at Zany's maybe we'll I honestly can't remember that no. could very well be true i lived there for like five years and i just love that city yeah oh you did i've i've only been there like one time and i thought it was very great when i was there yeah i haven't wonderful. been there before and i've been meaning to i've never well, pretty i soon. was supposed to well i was supposed to go see a concert i was gonna go see mika in may of 2020 and then COVID happened so what are you gonna do well what are you gonna do well thanks Tim. for having me y'all say- that Thank course. you for being here on Two Gays Watch Drag Race, Tim Murray. I guess today is Three Gays Watch Drag yeah, Race. Yeah, three. Wow. That's fun. What a week. What a week. What a week. <laughs> and what a guest we had in Tim mm. Murray. Am I right? Am I right? I love that he almost escaped the episode without talking about Alpha Bell. And then we just got that was not going to happen on my watch, honey. Mm-mm. <laughs> Not today. I needed to know. Yeah, Tim, we had so much fun. Please come back anytime this season. You know, we open invitation, honey. Back. Come on. Um, Aaron, do you want to let the listeners know where they can find you on social media? 100 percent You can follow me at a whole human on Twitter, Instagram, Aaron Holman on the Facebook. Uh, my other solo podcast, which is Moving from a weekly format into just a serial format. So listen, honey, there isn't a timeline, but I <laughs> promise you it'll be twice a month. Um, that's what I can promise because I would <laughs> love to continue to do this and uh, devote time to growing, you know, my own personal stuff. But follow that at Eye to Eye Podcast on Patreon or the Facebook page and I'll be here gay every week. Gay as always. Uh, you can follow me at Zachary with no H on Instagram and Twitter. And you can follow the show at Two Gays Watch on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that fun stuff. I also have a solo podcast, but it's just kind of in um it's a in limbo. It's, it's in limbo. It's coming back eventually, but for Mine now, too, like honey. We're having too much fun, and uh, I I don't want to do too. I just don't want to do. And two. we've got so many incredible guests that we've already had, and so many more coming. That yeah, we're just so excited about this, and yeah. make sure you tune back in. And by the time you listen to this episode, we will have launched our Patreon page. So if you head over to that, which is number two gays watch. Um, that has all sorts of bonus video content. You can find the full video versions of all of our interviews. We'll have other bonus content depending on the tiers you choose. You can vote on our special movie review episodes that we'll be doing that are released only for Patreon listeners. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I am so looking forward to everything we're about to do on Patreon. I am thrilled we're doing Drag Race, but I am ready to cover some movies too. 
That's right. We get the best of both worlds in the in the words of Miss Hannah the Montana. Best of both worlds. Yeah. yeah All like right. Singer. Well, with that, we are uh, <laughs> we're gonna head out. I'm gonna go. Yeah. See you next week. Okay. Bye. <laughs>